and welcome to the latest, newest show to come to intellectualradio.com. I am your host, Dana Michelle, and welcome to Dana Being Dana. It's our first show, and I'm very excited with my guests that I have here tonight. Um, to my left is Minister Kelly, Kelly Seely, who is a great friend of mine. Uh, we go way back, don't we? Way back. Way back. <laughs> Next to her is Gabby Smith. Who, What's up? Hey, Gabby. Hey, Dana Michelle. <laughs> Gabby is the host of the Gift of Gab show. Next to her is Inyatu Marvel, who is the co-host of the He Said, She Said show here on Intellectual Radio. And next to him is the lovely Wanda B, the host of uh, He Said, She Said. Welcome, Dana. Thank you. Thank you so much for welcoming me to the Intellectual Radio family. It's so good to be here. Um, thank you to our sponsors, Scene Chicago and My Chocolate Soul tonight. We're here in the studio, so we appreciate you all as well. Um, to start off, and to start off the show, I, I really wanted to talk about how I got here in the first place. Uh, it's an interesting story, and, and this project of being on the radio, having my own show, Dana Being Dana, is something that's been in the works for a long time. And so I really want to take this first opportunity to share with you kind of my, my history, my path, my story, and how I got to be here on the show. And so, um, for those of you who know me out there listening, and I know my mom is watching. Hi, <laughs> mom. I, I am a people person. I, I make friends wherever I go. I'm friends with my hairdresser. I'm friends with the lady that does my nails. I'm friends with everybody. And I am attracted to the human connection, the human interaction, networking, social, friends, etc. And that's just something that's been in my spirit that has been important to me. I love children, I love adults, just interacting with people in general. And that's something that has always been a part of me. And so um, I've been through a lot in, 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 the, in recent years. Uh, my dad passed in six years ago. Uh, suddenly, he had a heart attack, and um, that was tough. And shortly thereafter, I got divorced. And um, that was a tough time for me as well. And during all of that, it was a very dark phase for me. And I was wondering, why, I, why am I in the midst of this storm? And that's one reason why Kelly came into the picture as, as my sister, my girlfriend, my, my, my friend. Kelly and I went to college together. Spelman. We went to Spelman College. <laughs> and um, we've always been close. And it's in your valley that you learn so many, so many things about your character and who you are. And Kelly was there for me during that time, in that storm, in that valley. And I learned a lot about myself and just kind of where I was at. Um, so Kelly, you wanna, do you wanna speak to that? Sure, absolutely. Again, thank you, Dana, for having me here. I think we're all Team Dana. That's why we're here. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that um, Dana and I discussed over and over again, it always came up um, in our conversations was there's always a purpose in your pain. Yes. And you hear it said so much. You hear ministers say, you hear pastors say, it. it's a nice little cliche. But I think what people often fail to do is take a deeper look at what that means. And for me personally, and the journeys that we've shared together, yep. part of that is coming to the realization that purpose has, pain has three purposes. Pain is universal, pain is blinding, and pain pushes. Yes. So when pain is universal, I'm saying that everybody knows what it feels to lose something. Whether you're losing a person, a loved one, whether you're um, trapped in a situation and you're trying to figure out just how to really go through the, the hurt, the pain, the disappointment. You know what that's like. So when you say you're a people person, that means you can connect to all those different pieces of humanity. Right. Um, pain is blinding. You said you were in a dark space. We all know that there's a wilderness and a valley. When you're in that dark space, you can't see anything. Right. And when pain is so heavy, there's no way you can see that there really is truly a light at the end of the tunnel. And as my mom would always say, baby girl, just hang in there. Yep. 
you're going to get through it. Right. You're going to get to the other side. And then the last part is that pain pushes. Pain pushes us to realize who we really are, and that is that we are weak as human beings. Mm -hmm. And our flesh can only do so much, but when we, as Christians, if you say that that's who you are and what you believe, it pushes you to say, God, I can't do it. Right. I can't fix it. Right. So either you fix it for me, or I'm just going to continue to be in this pain. So I think that that's part of the journey and that's part of the uniqueness in your story is mm -hmm. that you would have never gotten to your aha until you got through all your pain. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. uh -huh. uh -huh. No, that, that, that's absolutely right. And it's interesting because one of the things that I found in the valley was the ability to laugh and just, and live. And I've had, ironically, so much fun, <laughs> and I know that sounds fun, but so much fun just in the valley. I learned to appre you appreciate the small things. It's where I developed my tribe, and those are the people who, who show up for you. Those are the people who are down for you. I expanded my village. I, I embraced where I was and the fact that I needed more support for, for me and my children. I was, I was going through divorce. I had two small kids. Um, and my dad had, had recently passed, so I was just going through a lot. And around the same time, one of my one of my good friends from the high school era, yeah, high school, Gabby Smith, <laughs> was was launching her career uh, in in the podcast media entertainment space. And she had asked me to discuss and talk about. My divorce. We did a show. It was the first show that I ever did, and, and, and we talked about my divorce. So, do you want to you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Tina, Michelle, I am so happy to be here. Thank it you. is truly a pleasure because, as you mentioned, you have been through a lot, but you've laughed through it, you have cried through it, and you are here now. Yes. So, I could not be more proud. Thank you. And Mr. Minister Kelly, that was beautiful. Oh, Thank you. Me. Thank you. Well, yes, yeah, so I'll just give you a brief uh, overview. A couple of years ago, I was asked to be on WGN Radio Chicago, and I was just on the radio talking about Chicago restaurants, just very basic, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being on the radio, just giving out knowledge to the audience, and I wanted to do something on my own. I wanted to create a lifestyle podcast and web series where I could really just share information with the audience, and one of the first topics I thought about was divorce. Now, everybody know somebody that's been through a divorce. I mean, it happens, right? Yeah. I think 50% of marriages end in divorce, unfortunately. But one person that I know that has been through it, but came out as a survivor on the end was Dame Michelle. And I really, really liked her story because not only were we able to talk through it in the podcast, we were able to laugh through it. Yes. And we had some fun times on that podcast. And if you have not <laughs> checked it out, you've got to listen to that podcast. And I will repost it on, um, on my social media sites. But basically, in that podcast, Dana talked literally beginning, middle, and end. Yes. You know, how it all started, what she went through, how she felt, and then how she came out at the end, how right. she had a divorce party when it was all over, and how turned we just, we, we turned out, we turned out. Hey, girl, we were we all about out. it. We were like, oh, we, we partied for a divorce, but it was a fun <laughs> celebration because she survived, and again, she's not the type that's gonna just sit there and wallow and shoop shoo. you know, you're not gonna do that, no. right? You're gonna really get out there and just turn that chapter and really become a true survivor and become stronger, and that's what I, I really admire most about you because as much as you were going through you survived, and I believe in, in my story, and my podcast, my web series, is that everybody has a story, and that's why I like doing this show, is that everybody has something to share, whether you want to share it or not, you've got a story, and Dana's story is so powerful, and I like the fact that you were so honest on that show, and I could not be prouder to be here with you today supporting your own show. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Uh, I, I, I agree, and I think that there is such therapy in transparency, I think, I think, there, I think uh, transparency is so therapeutic. And, and the feedback that I got from that show was so positive. So in, in, in sharing my own story, there was, there was healing. But what touched me more than anything was the ability to touch others. I was so surprised at the number of people who reached out after that show, who were talking about how much they appreciated what I had to say. There were people who were in marriages where husbands were like, I'm gonna start shoveling snow. I know you got. I'm gonna start getting information <laughs> because Dana's over here making divorce look good, honey. And we can't have that. And she does look good, y'all. She looks fat in a blue dress. 
I'm gonna wear this blue dress every week. <laughs> you look hot, Dana. Divorce dress? You can wear that dress. This is a divorce dress, huh? This is, this is TV. This is live radio. I love it. It's not radio. It's just, that's your survivor dress. Survivor dress. I like that better. Um, but in all seriousness, I mean, I had people who were in tears talking about, I wish my friend who, who got divorced could have heard your show because it's a message of survival. And I, I don't think divorce is for everybody. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about the upcoming shows. One of the upcoming shows, the next show actually is about divorce. And um, I just think that if you choose to move on, then it's such a new lease on life. It's a new chapter for you, which can be fantastic. It's, it's you are grieving the loss of, of what your dream was, but you're moving forward. And that's what I have done, uh, and, and I just hope to help and inspire others. So that's what touched me more than anything, was the ability to inspire others, entertain other people, and, and just move forward. And so I was excited, and, and Gabby and I did several shows together, which was a ton of fun. And so I kind of got the bug. I, I was interested in what platform made the most sense for me. What, what could I do outside of my day job that would help to inspire, influence, and just, and just help other people. And so my good friend Josh with Scene Chicago reached out to me last year and said, hey, you know, you've got a great, you got a great personality, you're funny, we can have a really good time. Would you be interested in writing for Scene Chicago magazine? Scene Chicago is an online magazine that covers everything from fashion to uh, what's happening in, in Chicago. They, they are really on the scene. And I said, well, what do you want me to write about? And he said, well, you can write about anything. Um, write about what you feel like. He said, you can write about me. Uh, but he said, no, seriously, he said, you can, you can write about anything. Right. He said, you can call it just Dana being Dana. And I said, OK. So, so that's exactly what I started to do uh, at the beginning of this year. And, and I started writing. And, and that's how the column Dana being Dana got started originally with Scene Chicago. Uh, magazine and it's been a ton of fun I write about all different things that are important to me things that I have experienced in my valley showing up for people uh, not taking your health for granted developing your tribe developing the people who uh, support you if you can't if you don't have it organically then you build it strategically go out and find the people that you need to support you and help you to be your best you and shouts out to my tribe because I couldn't do any of the stuff that I do. People ask me that, how do you do all the stuff you do? I couldn't do anything that I do without my tribe. At the helm of that is my mama. I hope she was able to, to download this. Um, and then of course, God the most high. I just appreciate everybody who's had my back because I feel like I've had so much support. Thank you to everybody who supported me with this show. Uh, and I was thinking about with Scene Chicago and the work that I had done with Gabby, what, what would my next platform be? Where does this go? What, what can I do with Dana being Dana? And so I reached out to my friend Inyatu, who had you know, media mogul, radio personality, baller general. Um, <laughs> that's just her profile. That's just his profile. Friend him, ladies. <laughs> and we had a conversation about what he does, how he got there. And I would love for him to share his story with you all because um, it's very similar to mine. And, and we talked about what I could do and, and, and where I could go next. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited for you, the launch of Dana Being Dana. Wow, we were just beginning to talk about this weeks ago, not yes. months. Not plural. months. It, it wasn't even two months ago. Yep. Weeks ago, and now we're here drinking rosé in the back, it's a rose. celebration. Um, you have a, for your first show, you have an awesome looking panel on the show. Are you, you talking about yourself? They ruined me, but mostly, I was talking about all the ladies on the panel, oh, so okay. uh, aesthetically, the show looks good, it sounds good, and so, um, ironically, I was trying to figure out some of the next phase of my life of what I wanted to do. Uh, being a senior vice president of a marketing company allowed me to empower some people to make money and do some other things, but I wanted a bigger uh, platform. And yes. so by chance, I was added to the group. He said, she said, and I've always been passionate about opening a dialogue between 
uh, men and women, particularly black men uh, and women. And so the post would come up and I would chime in. And one day, my beautiful friend and co-host Wanda inboxed me and said, hey, would you like to come be on the radio show? I didn't even know that was a radio show. Right. And I'm like, when? And she's like, Sunday. I came. I had a great time, and I believe it worked out well because I got a second invite, and then a third invite, and maybe after the fifth or the sixth time I appeared on the show, uh, she asked me to be the co-host, and I'm honored and blessed to be able to do that, and that has turned into a co-host in another show and a guest appearance on WBLN discussing Jay-Z's new album, and then resulted in me being here today on Dana Being Dana, so I really think it's a beautiful thing, and it has allowed us to uh, touch a lot of people, talk a lot about a lot of subjects. I know we talked about uh, child support and men being in their ch children's lives, and I went through a big court battle for that, and so a lot of people inboxing me uh, about that, uh, sharing their stories and asking for advice and things of that nature. And so I see things the same way that Dana uh, sees things as far as this opportunity, this platform. And so when you reached out to me and said, hey, I'm thinking about doing a show, I want to know what you think, I was super excited. I already knew you had a great personality from um, social media and then speaking to you on the phone and then you sent me the links to the show with, with, about Gift of Gas with Gabby here and I was like, oh wow, you have the, you know, you're funny, you <laughs> you <have the laughs> looks, you're intelligent, you're relatable, um, and you've experienced things. You know, you don't have this life where everything was uh, smooth and easy and, right. and, you know, and so people need to know that they're not the only people that are going through these things, they're not the only people that struggle through these things, and you don't have to let the pain take you out. Exactly. You can let the pain be a motivator to you. You can let it empower you to become an even better version of yourself. And I always say that God uses crisis to tear down the life that you don't want anyway. You're afraid to tear it down yourself. So God's like, okay. And he just hits it with a wrecking ball. But at first you're like, oh my God, why did he do that? Mm -hmm. But now you can build your dream house or your dream life with all the bathroom and closet space and the shoe racks that you want. Yeah. Yeah. California yeah. 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 And So whether it be divorce or changing careers or expanding your career or whatever the situation, um, it's all designed for you to win if you if you decide to do that. So thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm so glad that I'm the person that you reached out to. Welcome to the Intellectual Radio family. And we all know that Wanda was very instrumental in this too, because right after I got off the phone with you, I called Wanda, the yes. big boss, like, hey, I bet somebody who I think would be great. Uh, you know, I know you're super busy, but please take some time to talk to this young lady, check out what she's done before, and um, I'll pass it to Wanda, right? Or pass it back to No, you pass it to Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start out by saying congratulations. Thank you, Wanda. I am so excited for you and listening to the path along this way. I picked up some words that you all said and it really moved and touched me. The sisterhood, being a survivor, one thing that really connected right off when Yatsu mentioned you and, I, and you sent me your information and you sent me the gift of gap and it, that connection. Yes. And I think that's what the power is, the power mm -hmm. of connecting with people who've experienced the same things you've experienced. I divorced after 20 years, so I was like, okay. And I believe in the law of attraction and that mm -hmm. people are drawn to you for a certain reason. Yeah. And so right then I knew, okay, we had a similar story, a similar did. path. We did. And for that, I said, okay, yes, that's a story that needs to be told, and we have to work together. I mean, that, that sisterhood, that connection makes a difference. And for my show, he said, she said it started with kind of all the same things. I worked at the Sun Times for 25 years in marketing and decided I wanted to take a different journey and love to talk and wanted to use this as a place for healing and connecting and finding a voice when you've had a different voice and now it's time to find a new you and create a new path. And so also wanting to heal relationships and knowing yeah. that I had been in a relationship that I felt was broken or didn't know. So during that I said we need to heal our relationships mm -hmm. and find a better way to communicate. Because mm -hmm. that's one big major issue I had was learning to communicate myself as well as myself. So that was how it all started for me is to build communicate and I so believe in the power of attraction. So when in Yatu and I said, Oh, that connection right there. And so I'm so excited for you. I really am that uh, we've met up the gift of gab. I love that show. So I, I listen to all your shows after that. So I love this opportunity. Intellectual Radio welcomes you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so we're excited to have you and I'm, I'm really excited I, for the things to come for you as well. Yes. Because I think, like you said, you bring a story that 
people sometimes feel they're on an island by themselves yes. and they're dealing with something so alone. Even it's though so you can say divorce, but until you've gone through that, mm -hmm. sometimes you feel so isolated it's and true. that you're being judged and that you're being being ostracized or disconnected from friends that makes you different from your yeah. very friends. So sometimes just hearing someone say, I've been where you've been, yeah. been and I'm on the other side and you can be there with me yeah. is empowering. So I'm excited for you to do that for us. That's so true. And I just, like I said, I've been so touched to be able to help other people. And it's it's fun for me. It's, it's fun to spend time with people. And one of the things that I wanted to point out was Kelly and I are graduates of Spelman College, and it's, in my opinion, one of the best places you can go. It's the number one HBCU consistently. But <laughs> 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 well, absolutely, and just, you know, my niece just started again, as a freshman, so I'm going to endorse that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Spelman. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Spelman is sponsored. Yeah. 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 Well, we might have our own company. Right, 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 right. We're working on that. But it has been. Exactly. We need to get some Michigan. Up in here, <laughs> go, go blue. blue. Uh, but but the, the blue one. I'm, I'm gonna be wearing this blue dress just so y'all know. <laughs> okay, but but the sisterhood has always been a part of, of who I am, mm -hmm. and I think it's so true that strong women build each other up mm -hmm. and not tear each other down. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I have been so appreciative of through my process is, you know. I grew up with Kelly and Gabby and just having them in my lives in this way, showing up for me. Because I believe that showing up is very important. Be being there for somebody when they're in their valley. Not saying just, let me know if you need anything, right. but showing up and saying I'm here. When there's a party, present. what can I do? You're not just showing up for the divorce party. Right. <laughs> but you're showing up, you're showing up for, for how can I help and how can I be here for you? in a meaningful and tangible way. Um, that's important. You don't forget that. That's what resonates with you. And one of the things that I have been so appreciative of, and the reason why I wanted to do my very first show with the four of you here, is because the four of you have been so instrumental in my beginning. Wanda and Gabby had me on their shows, right? And it could have been this conflictual, competitive, like, mm, I don't know, you know, I'll, I'll call you, <laughs> right? But it was none of that. And, and they just dove in and said, I like your story. I appreciate what you're doing. We've got three separate shows at different times, with different things, different focuses, but we're all here to support each other. And so I just thank you both for being the beautiful spirits that you are and all of the, the stuff that you do to help enhance just improving people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that one thing that I've learned through my divorce and, and losing my dad was, you know, I had a new lease on life. And just your life is what you make of it. And I just encourage people to, to live your dreams, to be kind to other people, to spread love, and live your life for today. Even if, you know, so I don't, I've always talked about how you know, I don't think divorce is for everybody. I'm over here like the poster child, like, get divorced, girl. Shovel like, you your own snow. But 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 in all seriousness, you know, I just think I'm I'm so passionate about living your life the way that you should be living your life. So if you decide to stay married and make that marriage the best marriage that it can be, and we're gonna get more into this next week, but you know, if you choose to, to get divorced, that's your choice, and it's gonna be okay. It's a, it's a new chapter, it's a new beginning, and it, it, you should just be excited about living the life that you're living. And I'm all about living life to the fullest. Um, another thing about me is that I think I have so many different dimensions, from my upbringing to, to where I work, to what I do, to who I hang with, to my friends. And one of the things that has impressed me um, in my life is just the people that I've met. And I, it's, it's not hard for me to make friends. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy you know, being social. But I'm always so impressed with all the people that I meet. And part of Dana being Dana is being a platform for so many of my friends and all the interesting things that they are. They're entrepreneurs. They're business folks. They're lawyers. They're, they're doctors. They're 
professionals, the teachers. <laughs> but but they are just I'm just so impressed with with who they are. And and one of the things that made me think that I could do my own show was the fact that when we get together we just laugh and I keep saying that it's gonna be a lot of a lot of laughter. And we we just laugh, we have a good time. And I've always said I just wish I could just put a microphone and a camera in front of us when we're just hanging out and we're kicking back and we're relaxing, we're at homecoming, we're doing whatever. Because it's so funny and it's such a good time. And so I'm just happy to be able to have a, a, a venue and a place to bring that to the table. Because y'all will see that, that my friends, my people, my crew, we have a good time. And we talk about some very interesting topics. It's a very lively discussion. And we're transparent. And we keep it real. We yeah. keep it real, absolutely. And, and we're authentic. And so I just appreciate um, who my friends are. I can't wait for you to meet people. I, I, I have so many, I'm just overflowing with show ideas um, and things that I want to talk about, things that I want to share with all of you because we're going to have a good time. So get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Buckle up. We coming. <laughs> so Kelly, mm -hmm. I, I just want, you know, Kelly is, I'm so proud of Kelly. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so funny because we go back to our mothers went to college together, and and they no they went to they went to Fisk, they went to Fisk University in Nashville, Nashville Tennessee. That's Tennessee that's State, right across the way. You see exactly. <laughs> Shout out to Nashville. That's right. Um, and and it's so funny because when Kelly and I met in college, I was her student orientation leader, so I was the first face that Kelly saw when she came to school. And I was all energetic and young and how she is now. Hey, <laughs> go spelling. Right. And um, it's just so interesting to me because our story shows you how you come full circle. Mm -hmm. Kelly's a minister now, and and you can learn from people who you teach. Mm -hmm. And I was so busy trying to show her the way of Spelman and, and welcome to the school. And now in later years, you know, Kelly has taught me so much about about who I am and my path. And I feel like, particularly being on this show and, and Dana being Dana and just the overwhelming support that I've had. And I appreciate, I appreciate every share, every like, every post. Um, the support for Dana being Dana has been truly, truly phenomenal. Um, but, but learning so much from Kelly has been, has been so awesome. And so I just, I thank you and I appreciate you. Um, so I just want you to say a few words you know to 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 the audience and just also this is just the beginning of such an authentic and exciting journey mm -hmm. absolutely well Dana likewise and I'm sure all of us feel the same way whenever you watch someone it's like watching a child grow up and you see the progress and the tracking and you just see they run into a brick wall and you're like I know you can climb it I know you can climb it <laughs> then they climb it and you're like yeah I got my pump off and that's how our journey has been. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one of those relationships where you're just there right. and you're present. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny how things evolve and you don't realize you have the same values, but you know, you just check in, hey girl, just thinking about you, just want to see. When someone puts you, puts that person on your spirit, you, you call and you check in and then lo and behold, they're going through something. Yeah. So I would definitely make a point there and say, when you get that pressed upon your spirit, when someone's name comes into your mind and Go ahead right then and send them a text. Yeah. Go ahead and give them a call. Yes. Shoot them an email. Let, hey, you're you're on my mind. Uh, there have been so many times where that has happened to me, mm -hmm. and someone has had a loss. That's how I found out that your father passed. Yeah. And you know, and you don't. But that's how friendships are. You don't have to. Right. I didn't have to talk to you. I didn't even get to talk to you during that. But I got to check in with everyone else that was in your right. in your circle. Right. To make sure that you were okay. Yeah. So I would say definitely relationships are critical. Mm -hmm. God designed us to be relational. If he mm -hmm. wanted us to be isolated, he would have put us all on different islands by our own name. And with us being relational, that means there's always the people factor. Yes. So you have to be able to understand how to communicate with one another. We have to understand how you may have something that I don't, but guess what? We're all a part of God's body, which means we all have a purpose. And so whenever you have pain, it usually brings forth your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm in a similar situation, not from a divorce say, standpoint, but from a career standpoint. Some of us go through career struggles and we wonder why God allows us to stay in that space. Um, and I've 
personally experienced where I'm like, I'm in that moment of crying, God, and why, and why, and why, you know where I am, you know where my heart is. But when he spoke to me, he said, I haven't released you yet. And sometimes we have to learn how to hear that voice. Mm -hmm. And we don't hear that voice until we're often in the valley. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear that voice and you can say, okay, I'm going to remind myself, God, give me a scripture. Oh, yes, Romans 8, 28 tells me that it's all going to work together. Mm -hmm. All the mess, all the drama, all the hell, all the lies, all the cheating, all the slander. Yes. It's going to work together and make me a better person. Right. It's going to work together and bring forth something that's going to help me reach my destiny in a better way. It's going to provide relationships. It's going to remove the people that don't need to be in my life. And that's what has happened yes. to you. Yes. And that's what's happened to each of us. If we all take a moment and think back to how we got to this place, it's because God allowed that circumstance to happen because mm -hmm. he had to break us. Mm -hmm. That ball had to hit us. That cannonball had to hit us and just shake us up a little bit because if it didn't we wouldn't move forward right. and then we also wouldn't move out the way so he could do what he needs to do right so you have to remember too we're relational but all your pain has a purpose and it always pushes you to your destiny mm -hmm. and i'm so proud that life is cyclical and such that i can see you progress and you can see me progress and make different transitions and i'm just grateful for the divinity and the relationship that we have it's all purposeful it's all purposeful Right. Christ missionary. What do you call it? Christ missionary, first Baptist brawl, second right. like a Gibraltar church. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's amazing. And if, if you hadn't allowed him to bring you this far, if you hadn't allowed him to bring forth these individuals, you wouldn't have gotten to this space. Yeah. So look at you. Yeah. I mean you're just Radiating. Dana, Dana, Dana. 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 Own it. Yes. So when you meet Dana, you'll understand what we mean when we say Dana being Dana. Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, I, like I said, I'm always so touched by the people that I encounter. So it's not just me. I think, I think relationships have a common vibe and a shared vibe, and just. Like I said, I've known Gabby and Kelly forever, but but meeting Inyatu and meeting Wanda and you both being just so receptive. Because I'm sure you meet people like, I got an idea for a show. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> you know what, I think all ideas are good. I'm, I'm sure you I don't have to like it for the sure beat to, to touch someone. I, I gotta think everything is a good idea. Careers have been launched right in this place right here. I bumped into, uh, shout out to the producer owner of Intellectual Radio, Earl. I Thank bumped you, into Earl. people yes. who are further along in radio, they like, Earl was the one who encouraged me. Yes. Earl was the one who told me I could do it. So um, here we are, same situation. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is that, you know, sometimes God will put you in a position that you need to apply for. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hello. to me, this tape was just a huge representation of that. And so if you're watching this show and you have an idea and this, these stories of how we got here is touching you, uh, reach out to us as well. That I, you know, I'm always open to talk to people. I'm always open to try to help people. It's a blessing to me. I believe, you know, the more that I God uses me as an instrument to bless other people, uh, the more blessed I will be just by default. And so this is just an amazing night. It's an amazing opportunity. The blessed rose champagne was amazing. <laughs> Sit next to the amazing Gabby, the amazing Wanda, <laughs> amazing sermon just delivered by. <laughs> New, I got a new network. Yeah. I got some new people in the tribe. Right? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Wednesday night is Bible study. Right. Right. Well. Absolutely. So this is just an amazing, um, it's an amazing evening. I'm just happy to be a part of it. So thank you, Dana. And I'm just glad that you you owned it. You grabbed the bulls by the, by the bull by the horn, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad it's entitled Dana being Dana and nothing else. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was uh, always supposed to be. And um, you're more than ready. So, you know, bring all of those ideas into fruition. Bring all of those people that you want to bring onto the show and introduce to the world and introduce to the viewers. And uh, I expect great things for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we, well, and I was just going to say, yeah. you know, Dana, 
you know, you and I obviously we've known each other since high school. Mm -hmm. We've been through so much together. Yes. That's the rep party, yes. the fourth party, <laughs> yes. so all of it. To I don't see them. So yeah. we're here, we yeah. 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 yes. yes. all in the Yes, all the above. But um, but as I mentioned before, is that you are very um, real and transparent. And I think sometimes when you look on social media, you see a lot of people having fabulous lives. Yeah. And everything is so perfect in their world. Their kids are beautiful. Their husband's mm -hmm. fabulous. And they're posting all these great pictures. But nobody's necessarily telling the authentic truth. Yeah. And I think that's what was so great about our show that we did, The Divorce Show, because you were so authentic from beginning, mm -hmm. middle, and end. And it was just so fabulous to hear. And then as you mentioned, we did more shows after that. Yeah. So we were able to really talk through dating and how to get out there and how to get out of your own way. Yeah. And, you know, all of that, you yeah. know. So that that's what I was, what was so good. So I think that's what's going to do so well for you is just continuing that, that realness, that transparency. Because mm -hmm. You get sucked into social media like, dang, I'm the only one feeling yeah. pain today. Everybody yeah. else is, ha is, is right. happy. Everybody's doing this. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm the only one crying up in here. Everybody's doing the happy chat. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, real. but I'm over here yeah. like. And you're looking at real. And that's so true. And, and nothing could be more true when it comes to parenting because yeah. I because I always say, you never know what type of parent you are until you become one. Yeah, that's right. Can a church say amen? Amen. 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 amen again? And I always tell people that parenting is so much more than what you see on Facebook. Yes. yes. There is a very unsexy side to parenting. Oh. Uh, it's it's the late nights. It's the inconvenient times. Yes. It's the illnesses. It's the everything. I mean, we could go on and on. That's a whole other show <laughs> in and of itself. Um, but I believe in being real. And I try to be as transparent as I can because I think there's a certain authenticity mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And I've always found that when I have been transparent, it's relatable. Mm -hmm. and, and there's always somebody going through what you're going through. Or they know somebody who knows somebody. Right. Who's going through it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're not in it by yourself. Right. And that's comforting, that's encouraging, and I think that can be inspiring. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate sharing my story. I appreciate all of you sharing your stories with me. I look forward to us all sharing stories together. I want to hear more about what other things you're going to be talking about in Dana being Dana. Well, I have a show. That's right. What's lined up? Some people watch this too. A preview. A preview of what's to come. Well, there, there's so many different shows, and I, I want to talk about so many things that, that I'm involved in. Um, professionally, I'm an attorney, and so there's a lot of things. We can always talk about legal questions legal answers, um, somewhat legal advice, <laughs> <laughs> maybe free, maybe not. Um, but there's always legal issues and things to talk about. I think uh, just introducing some of, some of the businesses that my friends have. I love the fact, and one of the beauties about our school is that we've been out of school now for over years, and um, <laughs> People are now really coming into their own. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're developing their businesses. They're deep into their practices. And they're doing so many cool, interesting, and different things. And the beauty of our school is that we stay in touch with each other. You know, homecoming is a big deal for us. It's October twenty first, and <laughs> we make it a point. Book. We make it a point to be there and to show up. October eighteenth is going to be the homecoming show um, here at Intellectual Radio. So we've got I've got that coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking about music which is a huge part of who I am. I love music. I she didn't know she does sing. I'm just going to put that out there. Well, um, <laughs> just putting it out that's there. coming. <laughs> so there'll be music. We'll be talking about music. I think music is such a unifier mm -hmm. amongst people. Um, I, most recently, I went to the Bruno Mars concert this weekend and just seeing so many different colors, ages, creeds, shades, sizes um, is awesome. It's awesome. He reminds me of Stevie. He reminds me of Michael Jackson. Um, just the ability to prince, the ability to bring people together, which I love. So I love conversations about music. We can battle for hours, even though that's not my time slot. Um, I like Bruno, but when you made I those do. other people out, we almost was about to get into the debate right now. See? Hold <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my ear in. She's going to take off that blue dress. Michael Jackson? Can you identify a narcissist and a sociopath? Uh, that's coming. 
can I say who that is right now? Uh, <laughs> no. Hold on, you gotta stay tuned. Um, we've got we've got a, a women's show, girls trip. We just hit a million dollars, a hundred million dollars, hundred million dollars over the past weekend, and um, there's a legal conference that I'm going to in a couple of weeks, uh, which is in New Orleans. So I'll be bringing a bunch of lady lawyers in to talk. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there is a competition between the Real Housewives of the Chicago Land areas. We've got a couple areas who are interested in coming in here for their own separate shows, um, and I just. We'll be sharing you know, who I am, who my friends are, what I do, where we go, what we talk about, what we think about. Um, so you'll be meeting a lot of my friends, maybe some family, maybe my mom wants to come in here, we don't know. Um, but, but just having some, some serious conversations. I think being an adult is hard. Adulting is hard, being grown is hard. Paying bills is hard. And I think the more we can just talk about it, right? I'm at an age now where my, where my, my father's passed, but my, but my mother's getting older, my grandparents are getting older. Uh, my kids are growing up. I'm trying to make strides in my own career and, and who I am. And there's challenges within that. And I just love to talk about it because there's things that are hard, but there's also things that are so beautiful. And just connecting with people and being in this village together, being in this valley together at times, showing up for each other is what makes it all worth it what makes it all possible. And so I'm just so excited about celebrating successes, you know, and also sharing and trading war stories because I think that that makes us human. That's part of that human connection. That's what I really appreciate. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. So I hope uh, all of you come back and you all join me in this journey. We got a lot of things to talk about. A lot to talk about. There is a lot to talk about. We're going to laugh, we're going to sing, we're going to cry. We're going to pass the collection plate. <laughs> but we're going to have a good time. And you know, I don't promise to know everything. I'm a lawyer. They say lawyers like to talk. Uh, I don't promise to be an expert. I don't promise to have all the answers. But I am who I am. And that is just Dana. Being Dana. So, <laughs> so thank you. Um, I want to thank my sponsors uh, who are here tonight. Team Chicago is here tonight. Thank you so much for being here. As well as my chocolate soul. Um, Ramon, I think you're such a beautiful spirit. And I just appreciate you supporting me. Thank you, Josh, for supporting me as well. Uh, and so I just really appreciate everybody coming out. I think this has gotten off to a great start, and I can't wait to see where we go next. So thank you. I appreciate it. Great show. It's a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap. 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 It's a w